Well, it all started quite a few years back when I was about five years old. My dad had this beautiful stereo that uh, he brought home. And while he was away, my, uh, I asked my brother, I said, well, you know, I'm hearing these voices coming out of this thing. What exactly is what's happening? And he said, well, there are some little people in there. So I proceeded to take my dad's screwdriver, pliers, and a bunch of other things, and got to work. Needless to say, about two hours later, my mom walked in, and she freaked out. She looked at the stereo in pieces and said, oh, my God, what did you just do? And my dad walked in a few seconds later, and I think, I'm dead. I'm totally dead. And my dad says, at least he knows there's no people in there. And that stuck with me. As a kid growing up, I was always around electronics. There were circuit boards all over the place. There were soldering irons here, multimeters here. And so at the age of 11, somebody gave us a pair of walkie-talkie. And so I gave one to a friend of mine down the road. But it turns out his house is just a little bit out of the range of the walkie-talkie. So at the age of 10, I figured, well, OK, there's got to be a way to make this go further. So I started looking up stuff. There was no internet by then, so you couldn't just go Google stuff. Then you had to go look through the library, which we had a nice one. And I discovered how to make that walkie-talkie energy go further. And that was my introduction to electronics. And since then, I've, I've, I kind of do it for fun now. It's really, so oftentimes when I see these, device, with these presentations, I get flashback because I remember looking at the circuit boards, designing circuit boards, and stuff like that. So that's really my background. More recently, I'm involved with Argon, an artificial intelligence engine. It's an assistant, actually. It's a sentient assistant. So first, when you get it, it doesn't know much about you, just like any assistant. If you were to hire somebody, they wouldn't know if you want your coffee with cream or sugar, or if you take coffee or tea. The same with Argon. I'm also part of a group called TechCast Global. It's really a future, futurist group where we predict the adoption of technology. So this IoT space is perfect for us because one of the questions we get asked all the time is when is something going to become the norm? And so our group of uh, experts, that's what they do. They consult with companies, or should I say companies, uh, consult with us to get our advice and stuff like that. So let me... Uh, um, so basically, that's how I got to this space. Now, there's an IoT revolution taking place, and it's taking place in two areas. One is in hardware, but there's another revolution that's taking place in information. And all of this started off with what we humans like to do, which is to interact with things. From the Stone Age to today, where we're interacting with all kinds of devices. Virtually every aspect of our life is going to be touched by technology. So we're going to interact. That's, we've been doing that for years. The question becomes, all these devices that we're going to have, who is going to manage it? Because somebody has to manage it. Either you, the individual, or something has to manage it for you. So that's the key question. We're going to answer that today. So here are some examples. The next few slides are going to cover just some simple ones that you guys are all familiar with. Thermostat. You interact with it. In fact, you set it, and they have some smart ones now that are a little smarter than this one, obviously. ABS. This was revolutionary, by the way, in its time. But today, it's standard. You assume when you buy a car, it comes with ABS brakes. And it saves lives. Crash test dummies. Started off just, just some bodies. Today, they're packed with all kinds of technology. The idea here, though, is that the human being, the human body, as it interacts with the car, the vehicle, the technology, that we learn from that. All of these things generate lots of data. And this is my favorite, because it reminds me of a, of a task that I love to do that I don't get to do often, which is to fly. But I can't imagine a jet today, a pilot, going from here to Sydney, Australia, without an autopilot. It's just impossible. I mean, it would just be so boring. But a few years back, that technology didn't exist. So interacting with technology, here are some other examples in the house. You've got your coffee machine, and you have your washing machine, and of course you've got your smartphone. So interacting with technology is what we do as human beings. Now comes the internet of things. This revolution that is mentioned, where no shots are fired, but it's still a revolution. And of course, 
all of these are going to generate lots and lots of data. It's a massive business, $19 trillion when it's all said and done. So said CEO's, um, um, uh, Cisco's CEO, John Chambers. But the problem we face is all of these generate a lot of data. Data after data after data. In fact, one of the things, when you talk to most people today, when you talk to most of the, the, presentation, the presenters here, they tell you about the data. They keep talking about data. But it's a lot of data to manage. This is what the data will look like very shortly. This is a massive wave over on this side right here. And these are the people down here. This is us. And we are expected to manage all of that. So how do we manage all of that? We need an artificial intelligence engine, whether it's Argon in our case, or some other engine, DeepMind or something down the road. The bottom line is we need an AI to take that data, streamline it, and create actionable items so that you do not get overwhelmed. When I get in my car, my ABS brake isn't talking to me directly. It's talking to, when I step on the brake, I expect it to work. So Argon, as I said, it's an assistant. It's built on top of an AI engine. And what it does is it orchestrates your connected world. And of course, we have a booth outside you can check out for more information. We've created a Rebel API. We call it the Rebel because its job is to really take the data that you have generated by all those devices and to put it into some meaningful areas of your life. In other words, take your temperature, for example. Since Argon can figure out if you're on vacation, it can tell the thermostat to turn itself down. Or obviously, you can do it manually yourself. But that's the AI side of it that's working. In your navigation system in your car, you can connect to Argon also uh, from your navigation system. So today you see it on your phone. There's a version on your, um, your Google Play Store, um, and it's on your Android phones. But we're also building one for the um, iOS. Bottom line, when you, take off, when you look at all of these, we have AI plus IoT. And we call it the phantom web. And the reason we call it the phantom web is because for people, for, for people to use it, for it to be meaningful to them, at the end of the day, it has to be seamless to your life. I do not want 15,000 devices telling me I need your attention. It's going to be too much. What I really want is for something to tell me I just lowered the temperature, saved you a few dollars without me thinking about it. And that's what the AI side of things. And because it's done behind the scenes, we call it the phantom web. So essentially, people, the, the large-scale adoption that everybody's looking for will only occur when it's meaningful and simple to people's lives. So the future. The future looks good. We're going to be living in a fully connected world. Users are going to really um, rely on their... AIs to make the mundane decisions and leave the more important decisions to you. That's the future that we're looking at. So in this revolution, in the IoT revolution, if we do it right and we have the, the, the um, AIs managing all of that data and making your life a lot simpler, keyword is simpler, if we do that, then what we will have is a revolution where Everyone wins, and that's the bottom line for us. Everyone wins. Thank you.